Okay, so we're going to start this class for um, Sunday morning Torah and coffee. We're going to start this class with the blowing of the shofar, which it, today, the month of Elul, is the last day that we blow shofar during Elul. This is not, I want to stress, this is not the Rosh Hashanah blowing. Because on Rosh Hashanah, uh, it's a biblical mitzvah to blow Rosh Hashanah, as I'll explain in a moment. This is, during the month of El, there's a custom that we blow Rosh, we blow shofar. And um, we are doing so as part of the custom. So let's begin with some shofar blowing. And uh, yeah. show for blowing for the month of Elul, which is more like a practice run, and to arouse our hearts and to prepare us for Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> you are not to fulfill your obligation with the shofar that I just blew on Rosh Hashanah, which is a biblical mitzvah to blow Rosh Hashanah. We also always have the custom, I don't know if it's a biblical custom, to start with a blessing on the our coffee. So let's do that. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sha'akol Niyabitvaro. So, of course, we are basically a day before Rosh Hashanah. Tomorrow night is Rosh Hashanah. So, I want to start with a story. And I want to perhaps say another story a little bit later on. And a little bit of a Rosh Hashanah message. And a, uh, some insights. And perhaps tips of how to have a meaningful Rosh Hashanah <clears throat> at your home for those who are not comfortable coming to services because of the pandemic. I will say, and I will repeat this again by the time we finish class, I will say, let me put this on Do Not Disturb. Um, I will say that uh, I do have a, um, we do have both a regular minion, what I mean to say is an un, a minion with non-masks, or I shouldn't say non-masks, where masks optional, and a minion uh, prayer services of only masks, where you, you have to wear a mask as to um, make sure that every person who wants to come to services feels comfortable doing so. I will also say that um, we have Amongst the various Chabad centers here in Coral Springs, we have many uh, shofar blowings both throughout town. Look on our Facebook and you'll see different uh, schedules. We do have uh, shofar blowings here at Chabad, what we call Chabad Central, at the Chabad uh, High Center, in the northwest uh, part of town, at the Spanish Center, at Chabad Jewish Center, in the southwest part of town. And there are multiple blowings as well as in neighborhoods. And we will also do house calls. If you know somebody who needs to hear chauffeur, who is not feeling well and can't walk, can't come somewhere, let us know. We will arrange for somebody to walk because you're not supposed to drive. We will arrange for someone to walk. I shouldn't say not supposed to. It's actually forbidden to drive on the holiday. We will arrange for somebody to come blow chauffeur for you. So that's I want to I want to make that clear. Again, hearing chauffeur is a biblical command very very important so let's let's learn a little bit about Rosh Hashanah I mentioned this story I heard this story last week I heard this story from Rabbi uh, Jacobson Rabbi Jacobson uh, gives a great lecture you could see his lectures you type in his name he just you know has many great lectures so I want to give him the credit where credit is due but he mentioned th this story um, with um, during World War II, there was a group of Jewish uh, children who were um, taken out of Europe, out of war-torn uh, Europe, 
uh, in many cases, the parents would actually hand over their kids to various organizations, knowing that uh, um, at least their kids will hopefully survive the war. My own father-in-law, uh, Reb Zalman Zusya Kleiman, a, a world-renowned Hasidic artist, you know, of blessed memory, he himself was part of the, uh, uh, during World War II, he was, uh, he, during the Leningrad, Leningrad blockade, where I think close to two million uh, people died from starvation as the Nazis uh, surrounded, as the German army surrounded the city and, and uh, tried to starve them out. But there were many, many kids uh, who were smuggled out of the city. Um, and uh, my father was one of them. So in this particular case, it was a group of children that were taken out of Europe uh, and brought to London or to England, and um, one of these, one of the children, will call him Yankala, because I do not recall his name. We'll call him Yankala. One of these children um, was uh, <clears throat> one of these children was uh, uh, you know Yankala was uh, unlike unlike the uh, unlike uh, the other kids just could not be um, distracted in the sense of he was he was always crying he was really really uh, uh, depressed and whatever they tried to do at the orphanage just just nishgeholfen as we say in Yiddish they, they just couldn't get him out of his out of his deep state of, of crying and depression and so on um, one day there was an announcement in the orphanage that perked our little Yankala up somewhat. Um, what happened, what the announcement was that King George, King George was the, the father, for some, uh, many of you might know this, that King George was the father of Queen Elizabeth, the longest, Queen Elizabeth is the longest, I think, reigning, Marno, uh, reigning monarch, uh, monarch in, 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 in England. Uh, her father, King George, died in 1952 and during World War II he was the King of England and the announcement that was announced at the orphanage is that King George was coming to town or through town and therefore they would all line up outside and give their respects and so on and somehow this seemed to perk up our little Yankala and um, so with the others, Yankala went outside. He stood on line when the time came, the day and time came, and there was all this excitement in the in the in the town or in the city as King George was 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 arriving. And when the carriage came into vision and um, you know, came closer, without asking anybody, our little Yankala all of a sudden started you know left the you know the ranks of their all the other kids and with all his might he started to sprint towards the carriage you know sort of pushing through the crowds and he managed to make it up to the carriage where the guards finally sort of got hold of him and they wouldn't let him get through to get into the carriage and he started to shout and scream i must see the king i must see the king i must see the king You know, the guards uh, were basically just going to carry him off. But King George sort of heard the commotion. And he asked his guards, what's going on? So they told him. They said, look, there's this kid out there, and uh, he's desperately shouting and crying that he must see the king. So King George says, you know what, Let you know, bring him in. Bring him in, bring him in, or bring him onto the carriage. So our little Yankala all of a sudden finds himself face to face with King George, and the king asks him, you know, what's your name? Where are you from? And he says to him, you know, what's going on? What's what's this whole? Uh, you know, he could see that this wasn't just an ordinary kid acting mischievous. So the king says to him, you know, what is it that you want? So Yankala says to him, you know, my parents were left back in, you know, in Europe, whatever city or country it was in, and I'd like to see my parents. 
I'd like my parents to be able to come here. King George says to him, look, you know, uh, that's you know, very uh, amazing, your dedication to your parents, your love to your parents, and so on, but we're during, it's a, we're, we're at wartime now. You know, that, that that's, that's basically an impossibility. And he says to King George, Yankala responds, he says, but you are the king, and a king could do anything. King George was like really... You know, taken by the sincerity and the purity of this child and what is he going to do he just felt he can't disappoint the child so he says to him you know what give me their names and um, that's that well the uncle goes off the carriage the king uh, continues on his journey and a while later um, I don't know which, whether it was a couple of days later or a week later, Yankala gets called into the headmaster's office, into the principal, as we, and uh, he feels he's probably going to get reprimanded for his, uh, for his shtick and for his disrespect. And the headmaster says to him, you know, is it true that you, you know, went to the king, etc.? He says, yep, yep, it's true. And um, he says, you know, the king was really touched by your request. He's really saddened by your plight. And, and he decided, you know, to send you a gift. And a rather large gift. And, you know, the gift is just outside the door. So why don't you just go through the door? Yankala, you know, goes through the door and to his... I guess call it the greatest uh, and most beloved surprise who does he see there he sees his both his parents both his parents are there you know during war they still had ways of smuggling people out there was undercover agents there were uh, you know it did exist I'm not sure at what stage in the war this was um, but King George was so touched by Yankala's uh, plea that he saw to it that uh, he was able to smuggle his parents out of war-torn Europe, which happened. I know the previous Rebbe was smuggled out of Poland during the war. You know, there were instances where this, where this did occur. Um, so that's the story that I heard from Rabbi Jacobson. I will, I will get back sort of to the lesson that can be learned from this story. Uh, he, he, in a moment where I first want to just sort of take uh, a, a moment over here to 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 express another idea which we've shared in the past regarding regarding Rosh Hashanah. Now Rosh Hashanah is the is the the head of the year. That's the literal translation. And as I mentioned last week, it's not called New Year really in Hebrew. It is called Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. And the reason why it's called the head of the year is because it is the spiritual, it is the spiritual energy like the brain is to the year. Now, the word Shana, I want to share this following thought. The word Shana, and I know I, I'm pretty sure I shared this last year as well. Well, the, 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 the word Shana means a year but the reason why it's called Shana because in Hebrew the word Shana means to repeat and every single year you know there's a, a cycle of 365 or 354 based on the lunar cycle and Shana means that that cycle continue uh, repeats itself and so too spiritually there's a spiritual energy that comes down every single year in Rosh Hashanah which is the energy for existence that emanates from God Almighty for the entire year, which is why it's the day of judgment, which is why it's the day that Adam was created. So, Shana Chadasha um, can mean, uh, uh, or Shana Tova, a good year, can mean um, that you should have a year of good repeat. Okay? Meaning, meaning, we all know people that sadly and tragically will not have this this coming year repeated as they did last year. 
there are many people who are either um, unfortunately have come down with illness or they know people who are deceased who would love to just have this past year repeated. There are those who sadly cannot say that because they've had a very difficult year, maybe come down with chronic illness or maybe lost a loved one. But many, many have, thank God, had a good year, a year of good health, a year of success, a year of prosperity, and they would love to just have the assurance of having a repeat, shana, a new a new and repeated year of last year. No, just to have an ordinary Sunday and an ordinary Monday and a Shabbat and a, and a, and a, uh, and a Purim and a Lagba Omer and we say Lahavdal, separating the holy from the unholy, a 4th of July and a Memorial Day, etc., etc. All, all special days or ordinary days and ordinary life. We would love to just have that repeat. So on some level we say, Shana Tova, may God bless you to have a good repeat. That's level number one. Level number two, Shana in Hebrew, believe it or not, can also mean change. Lishanot can mean to change something. Which means that one of the signs that you are alive, the sign that something is alive is that it grows. That's one of the signs of life. And we're coming to God on Rosh Hashanah, we're coming to the King and circling a little bit back to the original story, we're coming to our king. And it is an opportunity where the king could do anything. And therefore, it is so important to be measured and to truly think about what are we going to ask? What are we gonna, what's the request that we're going we're gonna to present to the king? What is it that our true most inner self wants? It is, yes, a year of blessing, of good health, of material abundance. Those are, that's fine, but that's not our inner court. It's not the purpose of, of our creation. It is also spiritual and Jewish and godly uh, health. So on, a, on, a, on a, a separate level or a higher level, Shana means change. Shana Tova therefore could mean the following. Not only do we want to have a repeat of last year, but we want within that repeat, within the Sundays and the Mondays and the ordinary preparing coffee for my spouse every morning or whatever it might be, right? We want it to have change. We want to have a deeper appreciation, a deeper understanding, one uh, that we did not have last year. Shana Chadasha, Shana Tova means may God bless you to number one, entry level, have a repeat. Okay, fine. But within that repeat, it should be infused. It should be infused with a new, inspired sort of by a new and deeper appreciation and understanding and value of what life is. And, 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 <clears throat> and of course, all this has to be sort of on a, on, a, on a Torah, on a godly level. So this brings us to our third interpretation of the word Shana. Shana is also related to the word Shoneh, which means study of Torah. Study of Torah by committing ourselves to study Torah. Studying the deeper insight in, and blueprint of how God created the world and ourselves will allow us to be able to appreciate and infuse the repeat that we're looking for with a whole new level of understanding and purpose of mission. So <clears throat> this is the, the wish and the blessing that we wish each other when we say Shana Tova Um Tuka, may you have a sweet new year. Number one, may we be blessed. May we be blessed with a with a year of repeat. May all of us and everybody listening and all your friends and loved ones, a year of repeat, a good repeat, of course, we're talking about. If God forbid you had a, a troubled year, we're not wishing you to have a repeat. No. It should be straight to level two. Level two, Shana Tova, may you infuse that repeat because life, let me step back, repeat is where the real commitment of life uh, and a relationship is expressed. Um, Shana, I mean, uh, you know, 
the fact that you wake up every single morning and you, uh, um, uh, you know, the people often ask me, Rabbi, why do I have to say the same morning prayers every morning? It's kind of boring. But that's where cons you know, consistency, the fact that every single morning you have to make lunch for your kids, that's where real commitment is. Um, on the other hand, you want to be able to infuse that with newness, with a deeper understanding and appreciation. So that's where the second level comes. And number three, it has to come through a real serious commitment to studying Torah. Torah is, and there are many different areas of Torah which you can appreciate and can infuse your life with so much more richness and meaning and beauty and so on. So this would be the fantastic resolution for this coming year. And whether you're coming to services here or anywhere else, or whether you're going to be home. Rosh Hashanah is a time to recognize that we crown God as our King and we appear before our King. And you know, to 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 perhaps conclude with another story that's that's a sort of a warm story. You know, in the shtetlach, if you're familiar with the shtetlach concept is, in the little villages. You know, often there was a Malamed. A Malamed was a personal teacher that was hired by one family or several families who would go ahead and hire a teacher while the parents or dad was busy plowing the fields, you know, making a living. And often, and, and often these families sort of the, were, were, would hire a teacher from one of the nearby larger cities who was a, you know, a yeshiva graduate or so on, and they would come spend months uh, at the at the farms or the little shtetlach, and they would teach. So in one of these little uh, villages, um, the, uh, the teacher had to go back home uh, to tend, I guess, maybe to family matters, whatever it might have been. And the father was left with the responsibility of teaching his kids. He had three of his younger children that had to study, and uh, it was he had to teach them, and because he was the substitute and he was dad, the kids took advantage and the classroom wasn't exactly very disciplined until the father realized this is not going to work. So he says one morning he comes into class with his kindalach, his children, and he says, look, these are the rules. From this moment on, I am not your tati. During class, I am your teacher. And these are the rules. And anybody who breaks the rules, these are the consequences. And this is, and, the, and he stuck with it and he enforced it and so on. After a day of this, a much tougher environment the youngest one the youngest little one starts to cry starts to cry it was too much for him this 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 stern strict environment okay teacher slash dad you know still has a, a dad's heart and he says to the younger one he says yes trying to keep up the stern face he says you know what's the matter you know why why are you crying he says, you know, I don't, it's, I, I don't want to tell you because it's really something I want to tell my dad. So, so he says to him, um, well, now is, now is, uh, you know, teacher time. So he says, I understand. You ask me why I'm crying. So the teacher says, I'll tell you what. You could tell me what's bothering you, and I'll tell your dad. So that was that is the story, and and this story is used as a as a sort of metaphor that yes, Rosh Hashanah is a serious time; it's a day of the Anyum Kippur, it's a day of judgment. But we keep on saying the prayer of Vinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King. Because yes, it's a day of judgment, but at the same time, we know and we recognize and we sense and we feel that it's our Tati, it's our Father that's our King. And although there's a you know, sort of serious environment and, and a stern environment, because it is a day of judgment, but yet we know that we are talking and addressing our Father in Heaven, and certainly uh, He will respond uh, kindly, we have faith in that, which is why, as mentioned uh, last week, it's a mitzvah to have a festive meal on Rosh Hashanah because we have faith that God will grant us all collectively 
a much better year than this past year in every sense, health, in material abundance, and of course, as uh, the saying goes, God gives us gashmiut, God gives us materiality, and we turn it into holiness by using it for meaningful uh, uh, things in terms of both, uh, whether it's, again, our relationship between man and God, in prayer, command, fulfillment of commandments, and of course, in reaching out and helping uh, one another. Um, we do have, we still have, for those who are in need for, of food for the holidays, uh, mixed kosher boxes. We don't want anybody to go hungry or not have a place where to eat for Rosh Hashanah. Please let us know whether you or someone else needs a place to celebrate the holiday. Uh, we will make sure that that is taken care of. Everybody, really, you should have from the bottom of my heart, and of course, all of us listening to each other, I'm sure, we wish each other. Uh, that on this day when God decides and judges all of mankind as we say in the prayers it will be done in in a favorable way favorably uh, with much abundance and blessing especially as we will commit to up our game in terms of of, of using our talents and and gifts that we have in the most meaningful and and productive uh, and holy and kind and generous way so may we be blessed with a wonderful year. Everybody, thank you for listening. Please share these words of Torah with, with whoever you can so that we could spread uh, goodness and holiness.